50 players in the chat being like, oh yeah, I could have played that better. Chances are you probably couldn't, but here we go. Game number one between the set between 3D Cat and Core. Marlins versus HRE. And it's sure to be a good one. The winner of this series will move on to the main event of EGC TV's The Elite Classic. So we'll see who that will be. We've got a lot of action already. Look at that. A barracks being dropped down by Cat already. So early barracks. This, this is unusual. This might be something that we would see from GUA. He's going for that early barracks. I mean, there's not a hybrid map here. Maybe he's just going to try and uh, deny. Try and deny a... Yeah, it's still a little bit weird, though, to go for that house. I mean, I guess he wants to go for spears anyways in uh, Feudal Age just because of the... Uh, because of the... Uh, <laughs> the Warrior Scouts um, just being dangerous there at all times. And yeah, it makes sense to maybe go for them in Darkish as well. But Core spots that immediately, so yep. he knows. He's gonna yeah. know. I wonder how he'll answer that. But yeah, you kind of anytime you play Malian's gotta be thinking like, okay, are they gonna come around and mess with my houses? Real quick shout out to Poggers in the chat for the ten gifted subs. Thank you so much, and make sure you thank him. Uh, this is the time where I put my plug of uh, I'm waiting for my gifted subs. There uh, it looks like mine has run out. So uh, someone someone hook me up. <laughs> All right, first Spearman already across the map. Um, two already out on the field. Now, the question is, is how Core is going to react to us. Probably not at all, is my guess here. He'll probably just drop an archery range as soon as he gets up to the next age and be fine with that. Uh, will, however, delay the play with the Warrior Scouts early on. So maybe that's all that uh, Cat really wants here. Yep. And uh, that Spearman coming across, going to start working on those houses. And for now, uh, you know, sometimes you just kind of chalk it up when you're rallying. of like, that's okay. I'm going to lose something here or there. But actually, he's targeting the uh, the pit mine there. Not going to go for the house. Yeah, I mean, the pit mine, it has been... It does have a good amount of HP and mine... When the pit mine burns, that's usually worth more to repair than like these individual houses. Like if you go for the individual houses, um, usually you would just let them go down. But the pit mine, you can't really let it burn because it it's worth so much. And we do see Core going for wood right now, so he's gonna have the option of repairing that pit mine potentially with a couple of villagers. Issue is though that gold, I'm not sure. I don't think it's in range of the TC. If it's in range of the TC, then he could repair it safely. Probably not the case. It's already at nearly half HP. That's a lot of spearmen. I mean, he didn't just make one or two. He's got six spearmen. This isn't like an Ottoman one spearman showing up kind of situation, right? There's six spearmen here burning that down. So uh, looks like he's trying to age up as fast as he poss possibly can. But the, the spearmen are likely going to get some good value here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the pit mine going down, that's already a lot of value. For every single minute that that pit mine is not going to be rebuilt, that's going to be like 100 gold down the drain um, for Core. Now, he is going to have the Munzakari at least to make up for it, and this has been a big investment for uh, for Cat here. Actually, it's not been as great of an investment as I thought it might have been, because he's still going to be aging up at a... Or at least he's going to be close to aging up here, so he might be aging up by like a minute five as well if he pulls a lot of villagers for it. You know, it, it really hurts to lose that pit mine, but what's going to hurt even more is he's going to lose a few of these houses here. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, typically people will, will only send like a few to mess with you, but uh, he really committed to burning this down. Oh, of course, making a lumber camp before making his archery range. That's a mistake. Got to rush up that archery range. Okay, there he goes. Yep, okay, so action already, and we got a Minework Palace. It's the second time today we've seen this. Yeah, Maybe so might be uh, might inspired. be taking, yeah, a little bit of Salami inspiration here with the Minework Palace. He didn't, however, go for the deer early on. Does have a good amount of sheep there. Overall, this isn't the end of the world. A total damage of 200 uh, resources done to core here right now when it comes to the resource that he's put into these buildings. Mm -hmm. But like two archers are going to be able to deal with all of these uh, spearmen. And then he can just rebuild that up again and he'll be fine. There it goes. It is really annoying though because like now he's at a point of, like he has to walk down here and now build some more houses because he's about to be popped. He was another one he really would be, but I think that one will survive. Well... You might get that one too. 
Yeah, and then he'll be really pumped. Okay, Core really needs to make some houses now. He's going to pit mine first. Pit mine. Oh man, I think he's going to repair that, probably. Yeah, he's only burned it, not uh, destroyed it, so... A uh, little bit weird, a little bit weird. Okay. He's not playing as Mongols today. Yep, the Spearman rush has concluded. Now there's some archers out on the map. Core lost a few houses in a pit mine. And uh, we'll see kind of where things go from here. We see, a, a, of course, a stable drop for Core. So that's going to be some warrior scouts and probably going for some raids on the HRE. The deer actually grabbed their four. Did he build a tower next to this deer or is that just by itself? I'm assuming he's just out there getting him. He's rather forward on those. Uh, just... He made another prelate, so I'm guessing he's out there with eight yeah. villagers and a prelate and probably an outpost yeah. as well. And we do also see um, horsemen. Now, in this situation, the correct play that we saw, or rather that we didn't see Whitewater make uh, in the first game of the, um, in the first set of the day, was Donzos. If Core makes Donzos, the main units that Cat has been making so far, or the, or the main units that Cat is going to be getting bonuses from, from the mine work, are going to be completely, so to say, useless here in this situation, just because Donzos, they deal so, so, so well with these horsemen. In many situations, you can, like, uh, weave around a little bit with the horsemen. You can't do that when Donzos are out on the field, because the Donzos, they have that range attack, and once you're in range, you might easily lose a horseman just to that range attack. Yep, and uh, <laughs> horsemen continuing to uh, attack that uh, the pit mine, but now we have that barracks coming down, so probably some Donzo there. Is that two a second barracks? I think it looks like two. Villagers being pushed. Uh, yeah, that's here. a second barracks. So gonna be going for a lot of Donzos, and that is the right call. Now also he's gonna be pushing Cat off of those steers, so good uh, idle time there. Could even pull those two archer stair, take down the spearman, and really push him off there again. Cat looks to really be trying to push onto that pit mine there. And now the archers are coming forward to deal with those spears. Yep, and uh, those villagers continuing to work under that, but now he's going to lose a prelate, which... Uh, ah, that hurts. That's like two villager kills. Yeah. More than. Really hurts. Oh, what was that? A spearman, I think, went down over there, so... I mean, it's kind of the, the forward deer spawn, I guess. He's really decided to go for them, but at what cost, I guess, is what you have to think about at this point. He's got his double stable. He is working on burning down that pit mine again. You know, Malians, it's Making not the end of the world if you now. lose that. You just build another one, but... <laughs> it's always resource that it costs, so always got to keep that in mind. Yeah. And... yeah, 150 resource, and definitely the idle time is not, uh, not too cheap. Okay, now he's going to go and repair it again. I don't think Cat has the uh, has the upgrade yet on his um, on his horseman and uh, spearman with the plus two armor, and yeah, Core is getting a lot of really really great value here. I like this play a lot from Core going for the Donzo. I feel like this is really what uh, lost Whitewater that one game. I feel like if he just made Donzos in the field late, he could have been fine in that game against Salami. And here we see Core. Maybe he watched it. Maybe he uh, learned from that game, because now he's overall in a in a relatively good position here. Okay, so horseman chasing down the archers in the middle. He's defended his deer with honor so far and going to continue to get that food. But here comes the Malians across to mid with some Donzo as well starting to add up. But for now, oh, look at that. Using the healing of the prelate too, forward. Kind of a, the nice advantage mm -hmm. of having a forward deer with a prelate, I guess. Yeah, at the same time, Atri is also making some archers here, so really focusing on uh, just Feudal Age here. Now we also see the upgrade coming in from the Mineware Palace, giving the plus two uh, armor for the uh, Spearman and the uh, Horseman. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good here for Cat. Uh, Kor should really scout right now that uh, Cat is also adding in archers. I think maybe now he's in line of sight to see that, or close to being in line of sight of seeing that, uh, those yeah. couple of archers. Um, he definitely needs to invest into either... Ah, he, de he does need archers. With with the spears also being there, he definitely is going to need archers. Okay, so... Uh, he is able to save that pit mine despite all of that. And the horseman is here yet again, burning down his stuff. He's also expanded to pit mine there on the left side of the map. 
And, yep, uh, so good gold income here, completely passively for core. Question is, though, with the military and the scaling and just uh, 3D Cat having all of these blacksmith upgrades already. Going for the boar. It's going to be... Oof. Maybe bad timing. Bad timing, it. though. <laughs> uh, he does have his army there, though, so he's going to be fine. And the prelate heals the villagers up as well. Going to be a-okay. Really aggressive uh, food operations here today. Horseman chasing down the sofa, which is going to be... A bit of slower speed unit. Yeah, it's a little bit slower than the than the horseman. And don't forget about the mindwork prowess. Did he did he get the upgrade? I'm assuming he did. He did. Yeah. So he does have a lot of uh, melee armor, and this is the point in time where Cole really needs to get some archers out on the field, either archers or um, or some of these javelin throwers. Yep. Okay. So Core moving out with his Donzo mass. Gonna see what he can find. Probably heading towards mid there. We'll find that boar, but he's gonna be met by some archers. Horsemen continuing to chase on the left side. Seems to be pretty advantageous, especially those upgrades. Oh, some nice throws there from the Donzo. Archer going down. Archers maybe overextending a little bit. Oh man, I think he might have been focused on the micro of this those horsemen because it's kind of weird that these archers got caught off guard against the Donzo. Yeah, I mean the Donzo with their attack every now and then, the range attack, they I mean, they're, they're still not the best unit to use here to chase, but we can see that he's getting in some damage every now and then, which is quite which is quite nice. Yep, and uh, the archers have been kiting back. Here come the horsemen meeting up finally. Also something going on in that pit mine across the map, but for now, Donzo moving in, going after the spearmen, trying to take him out, but the horsemen have met up here on the flank. Ah, uh, Kor the... needs to pull those Donzos back. He's just... He's wasting his stunts right now against the archers, which mm -hmm. is uh, suboptimal to say the least. A little bit of a oh, gets a scout at least. Scrappy fight I'm here. Archers trying to take out the retreating Malian army. Yeah, important thing for Kor right now is he needs blacksmith upgrades soon. At some point in time here, just in order to keep up with the free, uh, well not free, but like the the cheaper blacksmith upgrades from uh, Cat. It really is make it, it does make a difference, especially with the archers. Just not having that pierce armor upgrade and uh, whatnot. And yeah, this is uh, really rough. And now the the horsemen are once again in uh, core space. He does have a couple of donzos at least to defend there. But right now he's just throwing lesser quality units into the the grinder somewhat. I feel like. Yeah, you see the destruction value in the bottom left. Uh, Cat's been able to get some really good attacks there. Not to also mention, he's got some villager raids while this has been going on on the side. Uh, Warrior scouts have ran off to heal, but they're back in this. These archer counts continue to grow. And uh, real quick, shout out to Women Cutie for the raid of 298. Thank you so much and welcome raiders. Thank you, indeed, and yeah, this is this is getting kind of dangerous now. Cole really needs to uh, scale his um, his military mass, and he has to do that soon. He can't keep making donzos right now. He keeps making donzos, but they don't really achieve anything for him right now because there aren't like a massive amount of uh, horsemen. I mean, Cat is still making horsemen, but you don't need like twice the number of uh, spearmen against horsemen. It's not like a kind of knight-ish uh, relationship, and. Yeah, this is rough. He just needs archers, and I would actually really also like to see him at like four to five um, javelin throws, just because with four to five javelin throws, you're able to do a lot of damage to these uh, to these archers, and they have extra range, and then usually tends to work quite nicely. You can see that cat has expanded down to the deer on the southeast side or the eastern side of the map. Has really just stayed out using the hunting this entire game has pushed Core all the way back to his base now. There's a lot of back and forth here. And uh, we got a few horsemen raiding in there. Cat moving across the field as Core's chasing, picking off the Donzo though. Every time he turns around, that's a dead Donzo going down. And then the horsemen can turn around and really take this engagement. Yeah, this is really rough. Core can't keep chasing this. He really needs to disengage, but only with the Donzos, keep the archers firing. And then once the archers uh, Get out. Oh no, this is bad. And now the horsemen turn and uh, put on the pain. Ah, that turn position. That really, really hurts. He still doesn't have the plus one uh, pierce damage. It's just coming in now. Picking off more Donzos. 
continuing to chase back and forth. This has been a lot of this <laughs> the last five, ten minutes. Now going to get within villager range, picking off a villager. Sofa pushing forward. He does have some spearmen, though. Cat yeah, has just been really pump. on top of his micro. Yes, he definitely has. Cat is definitely playing this incredibly well. Not something that I would personally have expected from Cat, just how well he's been executing this macro-wise as well behind all of this. Yeah, it's just a back and forth right now, and he's Cat is playing this really, really uh, mechanically solid. Got archers moving on up. Those archer numbers starting to really get big there for Cat. And uh, those villagers have been pushed off that wood line. Looks like they've moved down to the south wood line. Horseman pushing forward. The horseman count getting a little low there for Cat. But uh, looking at the army count, you can see he's doing just fine. Yeah, I mean, now there's also some javelin throws finally, but the issue is that Kor has lost like all of his Donzos here in the meantime. So if the horseman mass gets up again, he's going to need more um, Donzos there. But yeah, the, the archers is like the ma uh, the main problem. The numbers are just going to keep growing and growing. Now, Kor, he does have a good amount of uh, wood in the bank in the bank right now. He's just not producing archers right now. I'm not sure why. He definitely needs to keep producing a lot of archers. Okay, there he goes. He spams uh, adds another archery range. That's another barracks, which I'm not a great fan of. He already has to. I don't think he needs more right now. A lot of wood in the bank. 745 wood. He's just been so busy, I think, with this micro of this army back and forth. It, it just happens over time. You see the sofa, though, starting to really gather up as he's pushing forward again. I can't help but think he's going to turn around and yep, see exactly what we're seeing there. Yeah. He waits until the units are like in a favorable, posi a favorable position for him. Yeah. And that's only when he fights. Look at this horseman also uh, now getting on the back line. This is a lot of damage. Core losing a uh, lot of the, his units. The micro. Yeah, That's the micro was it. really, really off there. The Sophists were fighting against the Spearmen. And yeah, this is looking really, really rough right now for Core. He's just getting completely surrounded. Yep. The Archer Mask keep, kept growing. It seems like Cat would just kind of bait Core out to the mid map and then turn around and start punishing the Donzo. And he just did this on repeat several times was able to just whittle down his units. Really impressed by just his micro overall and his engagements. He's really been able to pick off the, the needed unit, and that's going to be, uh, I'm sure we'll see more of this throughout this series. Yeah, this was just in really, really well played. Definitely not what I expected from Cat coming in here with Seed 16. I mean, he did beat Anatan 3-0, which honestly just, I'm amazed. I'm amazed right now by how well Cat is playing this, really. Down the like, south. this is, in theory, GG right now, and yeah. of course, just sticking it out right now. Just incredible how well Cat played this. Even from the very beginning, taking out those, uh, those houses in the pit mine. So, yeah, it was a very clean game overall against Malians, which are considered to be one of the stronger civilizations right now. Yeah, I mean, we saw it earlier today as well that HRE, I mean, I already called it as well, that HRE is no longer in a position where they just default lose to Malians. I didn't expect the play with the uh, with the mind work though, and it worked out really really well here, especially with like the early minute uh, spearman here. I think just looking back at this, this is probably how we will see this matchup play being played from now on yeah. by default. Absolutely, that those just upgrades are so valuable. I mean, this horseman just having basically having so much armor in the spearman as well. It's just great. Yeah, this is really, really rough. Now, Cole also has a lot of idle time because there's only one berry bush remaining. Here come he the doesn't have doing. any wood income right now. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is Core's specialty move. It's called the villager in the battle. <laughs> Here we go. Get the knives out, boys! Here come the villagers. They're sending them all out. in. And don't forget the melee. <laughs> They're doing like no damage. <laughs> yeah. This is a situation of, okay, I will lose this fight, and I will lose this war, but at least I use my villagers efficiently. <laughs> oh, yeah, this, this is really, really rough. Hey, he's got Cat running away, and he's turning around again. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, Cat's just used his mobility just so, so well here. 
Yep, Horseman pushing up. I don't see any Donzo in there. This Horseman able to do so much. Archers running away. Villagers also were battling, and they're also on the run. Core continues to fight. He's a fighter. He's a lover. <laughs> he's definitely trying. You definitely can't take that away from him. Question is for how much longer is he going to try? Because the military difference is just going to keep growing and growing. And at some point, I think Cat is going to say, okay, I think I dealt enough damage. It's probably time for some rams. Yeah. That or you could even age up or whatever. I've got a question. A lot of times you've got players in these tournaments that will, they'll, they clear they always play them out to the end. Um, as part of it, like, well, you might wear your opponent down, but where, when does it start to be that you can also wear yourself down, especially in a day, like a day like today where like these players have been playing for a very long time. Like, is there, I, I've always been curious about that of like, doesn't it also <laughs> wear you out? Yeah, you can definitely get really tired here, especially considering that these players have been playing for like five hours straight now. Yeah. That really does... Personally, I I think I'm a little bit more affected by this. My mental usually starts uh, deteriorating after like uh, two, three hours of playing. Now we're at like five hours in and this is... Yeah, this is where it gets like really, really rough for some people. Yeah, it's definitely a thing. So, Cat continuing to just whittle away at cores, economy, military, everything. And we likely know where this game is going. So, we'll be thinking about the, the next one here very, very soon. Looks like something on the far north side was a raid or something. There we go. Tabs out. Game number one decisively going in favor of Cat Core losing this first one. But this is a best of five, so there's plenty of time for Core to get back in it. Exactly. This is not the end. Core still has a chance in this, and he's going to keep fighting. Core is definitely a fighter, so this is probably not the end here for him. Uh, wondering what we're going to see next. Maybe he chooses Woodwall immediately. Um, this has been more of a like, uh, pretty pretty offensive play from Cat, so maybe Woodwall is going to be the map where he's able to maybe get a little bit more of, a, of an advantage with uh, a macro kind of orientation. But man, this is uh, wow. Hmm, that, that was really, really rough. Like the the micro was just really, really on point here by Cat, and this is just I I haven't kept up to date with how Cat plays, but I'm impressed because this was definitely like a top top sixteen kind of performance here, which he needs to bring on. I mean, he beat beat Anatan three zero. That here between Core and Cat. Here we go. The game currently 1-0 in favor of Cat here in the Elite Classic Qualifier. And Core going to be looking to get some points on the board. We've got his home map of Dry Arabia. And Core will be playing the Roos versus Cat's English. Yeah, Cat playing the English here. He is going to go mm -hmm. out to those steers with villagers. And this is something we talked about it earlier. We've yeah. seen this a couple more times now. And... I feel like maybe this is just where the meta is going to evolve from now on, that like uh, just taking these deer early on actually really, really worthwhile. And I mean, it also is worthwhile in this one because it means that Cat is not going to have to uh, to go for like an extra scout. He's only sitting on mm -hmm, one scout. <laughs> Kordo is maybe getting one, two bounty. Okay, he's getting uh, two of those deer. Surprise. And he is going to move down to the other uh, deer spot there. So... I think this is overall going to be looking relatively good here for core bounty-wise. Yeah, I was surprised Cat didn't just grab all of those deer while he was there. But uh, either way, Core's going to be moving out there with his three scouts now. Going to be grabbing his wolves as well. And as you said, yeah, it seems like the meta has really gone uh, towards that early aggressive food going for those deer, even in the Dark Age. I mean, that was a pretty significant walk from the Towns hitter, going for that right away. Um, and mm -hmm. it's just become the new thing yeah i mean this is this is looking really great right now for core it's like the opposite of 80 bounty it's like probably 300 plus bounty here that we're going to be seeing from core even getting like a wolf there then there's another wolf on the way back to his base and as the only thing that could really fuck him up right now or screw him over is uh if he forgets to send sheep back to his tc Yep, I'm definitely, uh, what happened, I think I'm doing so good on the map with my scouting, my sheep gathering, and you look and you're just like, oh crap, and you got none under your town center. 
Yeah, this uh, has happened to plenty of Roost players in the past. Um, has happened to Core plenty of times as well. I hope this is not going to be one of those times where it's going to happen. Uh, yeah, the villagers, it's starting to get crowded there under the TC. Oh they're getting at hungry. least macro-wise, at least macro-wise, Core has clicked uh, Wheelbarrow at an early-ish timing. Though he's definitely making use of the bounty that he has gathered right now. He Council did. Hall coming out from Cat here. He was able to drop his sheep off, so villagers aren't going to go too hungry. And yeah, there's that Council Hall, so could be heading up to the Feudal Age. Nothing too crazy yet. There's the Kremlin. That's going to be dropped in base. Going to protect the wood and the gold. Are we going to do the... Is this the point in time where we're guessing how much bounty Core has? Oh, get in the chat, guys. How much bounty do you think Core has? Is it 80? I'm Is it 500? 310. Let's see what it's going to be. The guesses are coming in. 310 says crackety. I'm going to uh, just have to pick something different. Ooh. Oh, it's 370. Core is looking wow. good. Wow. Now that is some bounty there. Five but peanuts in the chat was the closest with 360. Yeah, that's a that's a nice nice amount of gold there. Okay, so Core getting an early surplus of gold and uh, of course that bounty uh, bonus as well, and. That Kremlin coming up, so maybe this will be Core's chance to get some points on the board. We'll see. Of course, there's plenty more left to happen here in this game. Moving out the scouts right now. Probably going to go see what is going on. Of course, he knows there's those uh, villagers gathering deer out in front of the base. Mm -hmm. But all this extra gold is going to allow Core to even get upgrades as soon as he ages up to the next age. So he's going to be able to get like double broad eggs, for example, really cheaply. And that's going to help him a lot overall. And now Core probably should also scout whether his opponent is going for a second TC. Maybe he's just assuming uh, English going for a second TC there. They definitely can do that. He's also getting some gremlins out, so maybe try... This is the point in time where he's going to say, okay, you've had enough fun with these yeah. uh, deer there. Get them low on HP. Go away now. Please leave. Uh, Ken's need... doing a nice micro here, and he's just uh, hitting the scout every now and then with the, with the arrow fire from his uh, villagers. But now there's an actual longbowman, so this one actually is going to start doing damage. Lose scout. It's going to lose the scout, which is unfortunate, but I mean... Scouts are all about vision, and he's still going to have a good amount of vision here. And now there come the can get gremlins. One villager, and this maybe... Will be worth it. Yeah, this will be worth it, because that's going to equalize the villager count as well. Because Kor went for an extra scout from his TC, and... Oh. Nice. Oh, he gets it! Wow. Impressive. Kor off to a great start this game. Longbow also taking some shots there from the, the gremlin. And that's going to be a second TC on the gold out, uh, outcropping there. And after that, I think Cat is probably just going to look for a Castle Age kind of play here. Actually, where, where's the TC going to go? It's going to go here. Okay, so it's still protecting the gold. Also, it's going to be protecting these deer now. So overall, really, really good spot here for the TC. Maybe not the best because with some... It's a, it's a pretty pretty long distance back to the rest of the base. And if we get to the point where like knights are going to be attacking uh, those villagers on the deer, uh, it could be a case of there just not being enough space in that uh, in the town center for them. Ooh, gets out. Yep, and we see over on a core side, he's going to be bringing these villagers forward, dropping his own town center on his rather forward deer. Also has a stable up. Yeah, but behind this overall, core is economically in a better position since... Sure, they get the TC up at roughly the same time, plus minus 10, 20 seconds. But Core behind this, he has Wheelbarrow, he has Double Broad X. So those are things that uh, push Core's economy a little bit further ahead. Also, he does have that tier 2 bounty, meaning that his villagers get the food 10% quicker right now. Also getting the survival techniques. Can we check if Cat got survival techniques at any one point in time? Since he's been on deer for quite a while now. Let's get a check. He's got the mill next to his second TC. And he did indeed go for uh, survival techniques. Also grabbing the wheelbarrow upgrade. 
I feel like with how uh, popular survival techniques is, we're gonna have to add it to the to the Ecotex UI up top or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe it could get like a little little bonus like checkbox. There's a deer, a golden deer, maybe appears. <laughs> Okay, so Kor uh, did lose two of his scouts. He is now trained up a knight. We've got an early knight out on the field. Cat picking up wheelbarrow, of course. And both players going to be just kind of booming up. We'll kind of see what they do next. Three longbows so far for Cat. Yeah, of course, also made a couple of archers. And the longbows for Cat right now, they're just roaming around. There's one longbow way in the back of Kor's base. Just like running around looking for stuff to do. Hasn't found anything yet, but you never know. At any one point in time, there might be a point where Cole moves villagers out and that one longbow is going to spot it. Yep. And uh, Scout's coming across mid. Going to kind of see what's going on. There's that knight. So Cat's uh, got to be careful not to lose his longbows to that knight if they come across mid. Because I don't think he has a... Does he have barracks yet? He doesn't, but the thing is, he doesn't need a barracks right now. All of his resources that he needs to age up yeah, are, in his base. are pretty pretty well defended, yeah, in his base, next to his secondary TC. So he can just age up, and he'll be fine. And I think Kor needs to do the same thing, and he is macroing towards an age up here. Yeah, he does have a, a barracks if he needs it. it. Looks like he is trained up. He's got some uh, spearmen queued up. Going for that boar. Down goes the boar, and of course he's got that great bounty, so... I mean, what bounty is he at now? Let's see. What's the math? What was he at before? I already forgot. 370. Now he's going to be at 435. So, uh, 45, uh, 45. Yeah, getting close to that 500 bounty mark. If he gets another boar, then that's going to push him over. But the boar is being walled in right now by a cat, I believe. Mm. That's a little bit annoying. It's definitely going to be annoying. Yeah, just beyond that wall. Uh, it's going to... Okay, villagers are going to survive. No villager goes down. Longbow's getting sniped. Nice trade. And now there's also a couple of spearmen out on the field from Cat. Uh, more and more longbows coming out, though. This is starting to get a little bit dicey for these archers here. Core might need to invest a little bit more into archers at some point in time. Instead, queues another knight, but there are already four spearmen out on the map. And Cat, he's moving forward. And this is this is the annoying thing with longbows where they're able to snipe your villagers that are pretty much right under a tc it's just the the range is just pretty big yep and uh knights going around the side picks off that longbow looks like both player though just kind of content with sitting back we've got core aging up with the abbey of the trinity three relics across the middle also one in the top left potential Candidates for uh, collection. The villager, he's just walking back, right back to work. Job's done. Oh, does live. He really wants to finish that deer. He's so close. Some low HP vills, though. Needs to be very yeah, careful. Yeah, these are here. really low HP. Don't forget. Core, you, you'll have to notice. You'll have to notice, Core. Don't oh. forget Cat's micro. He could pick like three off in a volley. One. Uh, gets one more. Okay. Okay. But Kor, he just keeps sending them back to work. He he really needs to think of other positions here. And behind this, Cat is fully walled right now. Yeah. Or about to be fully walled. That's a complete wall and there. also aging up soon as well to the Castle Age. Probably going to be aging up with the King's Palace. And once the King's Palace is out, that's going to be putting Kor in timer. He will need to do a lot of pressure in Castle Age then because 3TC was 2TC. Do the math. It's uh, not looking good for the player on 2TC. Now there's some knights, though, at a good timing here. Ooh. Gets a villager. Maybe two. And get the last one. Nope. Gets away. It was a little bit too fast. Knight upgrade coming in right now as well. And now Cat is going to be able to age up with the King's Palace here. He's got three gold veins basically behind those walls. Not to mention the, yeah. the farming gold he will later extract, so... He's got a nice boar, spot. he's got beer. Yeah, overall, just really, really nice spot there. He's got Four beer? Cats. Did you say he, got, he has beer? Man, I'm boar. I'm getting <laughs> jealous. Okay, so Kor is still just chilling there mid. He is uh, aged up, and looks like he's going to be working on gathering those relics right now. Yeah, 
gets those really, really cheap uh, warrior monks and just collects the relics, which is going to be good enough for him for now. He's got luck that none of these relics are inside the walls from Cat, so that's looking pretty good for him. Also, one single spearman is not going to be enough to take a relic away from these warrior monks. They are pretty, pretty quick after all, even with a relic on their back. And is going to be able to collect that first relic, second warrior monk already on the way for that next one. Now 3-cat reaches the castle age. Wonder what units he's going to go for. Is he adding any stables to go for knights himself or is he just going to be keep... Uh, just going to keep pumping up some of those infantry. Yeah, it's just farm transition for him right now. You have no major moves right now. They're both kind of just setting their economy up. Getting their production going. You see a siege workshop coming down right now for core. So I think both players is going to take their time. But in a late mm. game scenario, which civ would you rather be here? English. 100% all the time English and uh, Spearman out on the map. Oh my gosh. That, oh, Is he it? spots him immediately. Oh. He reacts immediately to it as well. Wow. Really insane reactions there. Yeah, he saw it. I guess he was Honestly, at every it. at every point in time here, I look at Cat's moves and I'm surprised just how well he executes his stuff. Like, really not something that I expect out of him. Uh, not trying to bash him here, but just plays really, really well. Got Spearman going down. He's going to be able to secure that. Probably bring another warrior monk up to grab that. Yeah, that's not going to be a big deal. And behind this, Kor is also trying to sneak the relic from Cat that he had on his side of the map. Actually gets that now. Now he's just going to be sneaky about how to return that to his base. Because Cat is sending a lot of units over there in that direction. And yeah, those units are... That warrior monk is going to run into those spears. And now he sees them. <laughs> They're just fighting over this relic. Like, Cat knows he's going for it. And he's just going to keep trolling this. And he's been able to stop it. He was looking for it for. That's how he was getting it so quickly. Yeah. Right now, Cat is still massing up a lot of these longbowmen and uh, spearmen. And... Core at some point he he has to think okay am I gonna compete here with the with the longbowman with my own archers or will I go for uh, another unit here am I gonna go for maybe a, a siege workshop and then just add some oh fight oh he loses some knights not paying Ooh. attention that's uh, a little bit rough but overall still fine he needs to focus down the spearmen he it... cannot waste his volleys on the on the longbows and he needs to posture around a little bit more with those knights that he has. Boyas Fortitude is about to finish. Boyas Fortitude just finished. It's a one HP knight. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, and these archers, the longbows, they're just... Uh, the micro isn't there right now for, for core and the numbers as well. And Cat is going to be able to secure that relic. Yeah, this is kind of similar to what we saw in that, in that previous game, just in these engagements. Uh, oh, Kat. but behind this, core added a 30C at one point. Mm. So he's actually not going to be too bad when it comes to being on a timer. Okay, so, oh, where's the village? He's got like, one build. There, he's got, they're hiding. Yeah, they're 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 hiding. They're just not uh, on the POV of Kent right now. So there are there are villagers, seven villagers building that. The issue that I see right now though is uh, the food income long term because Core is gonna have to do a farm transition here at some point. He needs to get value in soon, and now Cat is adding in men at arms and. Core right now, he doesn't have a response to these men. I'm sure he has knights, but with all of these spearmen in there, the knights are not going to be able to engage on these men at arms as long as the spearmen are with them. These so Core just... is going to need to add crossbows here at some point soon. He's also adding a mangonel. I'm just not sure about the timing here for him. These aren't just any man at arms. These are chat at arms. Look, he's getting his ironclad upgrade right now. He's going to be ready yep. to go. And so far, I mean, Cat didn't have a single blacksmith upgrade. He's only just now getting his first blacksmith upgrades. I feel like maybe if Core realized that Cat didn't have a single blacksmith upgrade, he probably should have taken that fight earlier, even with his uh, knights. Just run the knights in and just try to micro them back a little bit more and focus down these uh, spearmen with his uh, with his archers. Okay, That's so a lot of knights right now. He might want to try and. Get some damage in on the sides of the base from Cat. These are only Palisade walls, so you can burn Kulam rather quickly. Get the Monk. Monk, I guess, yep. And now he's got that Ironclad upgrade. Is 
has researched, and I feel like we're, there's gonna be a point in time where we're. Uh, Cat just is gonna push in, which I think is what we're seeing. Although there's mangonels, ready to they party. They're all mangonels. Yep. Ooh, a nice hit on the spearman Ooh. too. Yeah, that was really nice. The spearmen were clumped up, so that shot did a good amount of damage there. Okay, Core. And now ready. this is the point in time where Core needs to push forward. His opponent right now doesn't have any way to deal with the siege. Yeah. This is where it needs to happen. He's now rushing up a siege workshop. But Core, he's missing the timing. Warrior monks aren't being microed in the attack group. It's always the issue when you go for like select all military. The uh, the warrior monks aren't in that group. Mangonel's uh, Mangonel not shots able to get missing. The yep. But those longbows outside of the wall, Knight's able to get some damage with that charge. Oh, that could have been a good hit there from that Mangonel. They are very clumped up right now, so he needs to keep moving. Gets the outpost at least, so that's going to uh, deny a lot of vision there. Springles are in queue. And you know he's got to know that these uh, Springles are going to be there in a second, so... He's yeah. got his own Springle on the way as well. Just anticipate He's it. making an L shots always so close with the way that Cat just pulls his villagers back always just in time. I was getting nervous because uh, there's nothing worse than fighting English in their base. Uh, not yeah, only the, it's, it's rough. the bonus they get uh, from that network of keeps, but the... Uh, yeah, the, just the military production and everything, like you think you're doing well and then you get into the base and it's like, oh crap. For right now, what he needs to do is he needs to just split up his cavalry army and just attack from multiple sides at the same time. Just get create different openings because the infantry from Cat is going to be slow. Yeah. And now the Springles are going to be pushing forward and in typical formation shuffling manner. The mangoes? Okay, he, he did pull them back, so at least they're not in the worst position possible. Springle but the Springles are shooting. And the mangoes are shooting wide. Where are they shooting? I don't know. And Kors just wasting his cavalry right now against the against the spearmen. He might be able to overwhelm the spears though. He's getting the he's cleaning up the spears. Okay, so now it's getting uh, going to be tough for Cat actually. It's going to kite back. Boys, There's more spearmen the now. He's careful. Yeah, this is this is rough. He regrouped and now the spearmen are nestled in between the archers. Oh. Lost a lot of knights there. Yeah, all of the knights are pretty much going down. I mean, it's it's an army switch right now. I mean, Kor still has more army count right now, but he lost his most valuable unit. Actually, Kor he fought too early. He just—it's not that he's got more army. It's 30 militia right now that's that are on their way mm. towards the base of uh, Cat. Oh man, this would have been nice in that last fight. Sure would have been extremely nice, especially since he also had warrior monks there. You get those Levi Militia buffed up with the with the uh, oh Warrior Monk buff. Suddenly they are tanky and do a good amount of damage, but that's not going to be the case here. And we can see that they don't do a lot here in this fight for Core. He lost his siege, he lost his army, and now it's it's really rough. It's going to be really really rough. Yep, Core has been able to secure two sacred sites as well as three relics, but. English turtling back, and uh, as I kind of said before that fight, it stinks to play English in their own base if you're not for sure going to take the fight. And uh, it seems like we yeah, had maybe just a little more units, he would have had that one, maybe even those militia. But now Cat's coming out, he's got his villagers going to be dropping towers and creeping across the map. I think the English offensive is beginning. Of course, not producing units right now, or at least very few. The queue is near empty for him right now. He's got just a couple of knights right now out on the field. But not enough to deal with this. Well, lone warrior monk is going to get sniped here as well. And now he's making horsemen. But these horsemen aren't even upgraded to the uh, feudal age variant. Nice springle snipe. Core has been able to take out nice. both of the springles. Yeah, that's pretty good for him right now. I mean, right now, Cat is still fighting under a Kremlin. Is the coming which up? Which probably isn't the, the best idea. Yeah, with the mangonel coming up soon. How, mu how many reinforcements are there? There are a good chunk of reinforcements uh, coming out from uh, Cat Space right now. Here comes that mangonel. See what it can do. Just a little bit, and here we go. Mangonel pops out. It's gonna just move away. There are two mangonels two from both sides. He's a fire. There we go. 
How much longer is it going to stay alive, Bad though? Spearman position. now also firing on it. It's a good amount of shots off, though. Like, these shots were pretty, pretty damn decent there. Yeah. Tower did get finished. So now he's got that benefit. You can see all of the English units glowing as he's crept across. And now he's building military reduction. I think he's just going to look to pump Spearman and Man-at-Arms here. Yeah, and now there's forward Springles coming in as well. I almost wish he had uh, laid those Mangano shots on the villagers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is going to be rough. And these two Springles here from Core right now, they're both really, really weak HP-wise. And yeah. gets one Springle. Nice Maybe shot. he gets the second one. No, he does pull back here now. The man but yeah, he, he needs units. The Yeah, it, the... Infantry is just going to kill the uh, Springles there, and Kors just lacking units right now out on the field. He's got a lot of gold in the bank, too, uh, all things considered. The villager count has been very similar, not to mention the relics he's had. He's just really struggling against this uh, English composition. Hasn't be able, been able to really steady his forces since he had to retreat back to his base. Yeah, and behind this, I mean, he's still gathering a lot of gold right now. He's just not able to really use it too effectively at the moment. And he's trying to make this a siege battle, but Cat isn't really letting him. And that's, that's like, the danger here right now with English. And loses another Mangonel Ooh. right now. And this, this hurts. This hurts really badly right now. And the majority of his production right now is relatively far forward. So he can only fall back so far until it becomes really, really painful for him to keep producing units. I mean, it's already really painful for him to produce units right now. They're getting sniped really, really quickly. And Those man man, I, I just can't believe that this is... That this is Cat right now. He's playing this so well. Yeah, I mean, Core was in a pretty good spot until the, that chase kind of across the map. Um, and still, like, bank-wise, Luke is doing great. He just, he needs more military production. A lot of his stuff is kind of occupied towards the front. Yeah, that's a big issue. But now the men arms are in the economy, and that's usually when it's GG, because you can't really get rid of these men arms without something like knights. Your own men arms aren't going to be able to deal with them. Course actually pulling the villagers, but they don't do any damage here. And, yeah, this is GG now. Man, just I... overwhelmed, and wow. I Just, can't help but think wow. what this Kremlin uh, levy would have been able to do if he had included him in that fight. Yes. Could have probably been a little bit better for him, but like, look at the food economy right now. 3,000 food per minute compared to 2,000 food per minute. Yeah, and a lot of it is going to go idle for Kosun. The man arms are just going to be pretty unstoppable. Yeah. Core definitely also needs his own mended arms just as a meat shield against these longbows because you can't just keep making knights against longbows and spears. It just doesn't work. Definitely needs his own mended arms there. Even if they're not as strong as English mended arms, they're a decent enough meat shield and they were a necessary meat shield here. Okay, Core trying to clean up uh, this raid in his base. No walls for Core, of course. Cat uh, completely walled in the other side. The English economy has been pretty much unstoppable. You can see 152 vills versus 108 for Core. So it's just a matter of time, but Core is going to fight this out to the end, of course. Yep. And, I mean, <laughs> it's insane. Just kept also making, like, these really, really far forward production buildings. And look at the Q. He's got 12-minute arms, 11 spearmen, 20 longbows. He can go Imperial Age right now, and he's just going to go for forward Berkshire, I assume. Just, like, a get out of my game Berkshire pa uh, Palace, and there it is. Okay, so he's looking to finish this one off. Let's see how long Kor sticks this in, uh, out. We'll see as he drops that landmark down how Kor feels about that. There it is. That, that's a flex right there. Yeah, that, that really hurts. And now more and more villagers being pulled to finish that off, and... Uh, I mean, the micro also just isn't quite there. Core every now and then his archers are just getting stuck on those uh, on those mended arms instead of fighting against the um, fighting against the spearmen there, and that really hurts when you got like these spearmen men at arm mixed together. Once your archers are like stu uh, they automatically like hit the nearest target, and sometimes okay now it's suddenly a men at arms that they're trying to hit. But the mangonels are taking great shots at the villagers there that are trying to get that Berkshire palace up and. Looks like Cat is pulling more villagers from his base in order to get that up, but he's lost quite a bunch of villagers there so far. Still, though, he's sitting at 130 villages, so it's uh, probably not the worst situation for him to be in. Yep. 
Looks like uh, Kors, he's holding on. He's trying laying down shots on those villagers. But uh, one military loading Q, but the Q is not where he needs them right now. Yep. And he calls it. Game number Damn. two goes in favor of uh, Cat there, although it looked like Core had uh, definitely a good opening with all the bounty he had, and then uh, it seemed like he had a good presence throughout the game, but they just kind of uh, one of those attacks that kind of overcommitted if we look at the military graph, and then uh, the, he did not bring his, his Kremlin gremlins along for the ride. I think that might have been a, a little bit of a down point uh, where this game really turned. Yeah. Overall, I just got to say, once again, amazingly played by Cat here. Just the completely right uh, game plan here from the get-go. I'm, I'm honestly just left speechless almost. Just the way he played, the way he executed. First game, we saw his, uh, his micro and just macro with early aggression. But this one also really, really nice. His macro towards Castle Age and from there on out. Damn. Just, I, I don't recognize the Cat that... Uh, I see usually play there at all. I mean, he last yesterday he lost 2-0 against Yui Metal. Today he wins 3-0 against Anatent and now already leading 2-0 against Core. That's uh, mighty impressive. And this is part of the Elite Classic Qualifier event. The winner of this game, in fact, qualifying for the main, the whole thing. Yeah, and here we go. We can see a map, and now you know why this is very, very comparable to Hideout. It's a uh, there. There is something in the middle of the map. I think it's like a big H, which uh, stands for "Hey, you can't pass here." So, um, yeah, players. In order to get to the opponent, they will have to go the long way around. We can also see the markets. They're sitting relatively uh, middle-ish of the map here. Which means that if you place your mark in the corner, you're probably going to have a pretty, pretty good trade there. And uh, so, yeah, I, we're talking about trade a lot. We, we don't even know yet if it's going to happen. But what we do know is that Cat, once again, goes for the deer early on. Well, and... Uh, That's we, the third time. Yep. We were talking about the differences between this and Hideout. Well, uh, for this one, you can see that wood in the middle is quite far from the town center. So it could be, in fact, raided if knights can get around to that or whatever. And then on the side, if you actually do wall up, you can't chop around it because there's actual uh, mountains on the side of this map. Yeah. Now Cat also getting survival techniques. So this time we know we don't need the confirmation later on. Cat is getting survival techniques with that early, um, early deer play here. Let's see. Players just scouting around right now. Typical early game kind of stuff. Core getting his gold in. He built his early village. Just gonna macro his way towards the uh, Song Dynasty now. Cat, meanwhile, also trying to macro his way towards the next age. Gets a little bit of extra villagers on to uh, gold right now. Just because he's gonna get a lot of food. More food than he would usually be getting with, others, uh, with other um, starts right now. Since he has so many villagers on the, on the deer. Isn't dropping the sheep next to the mill. I feel like he probably could have dropped those sheep there unless... Unless he he has a plan in mind where he wants to uh, maybe move a lot of villagers away from that mill sometime soon. Yeah, he's moving those sheep slowly back to the town center. And uh, so far, nothing too crazy here. We've got uh, sheep being picked up. It looks like we've got a drop off there for China. And uh, I'm excited to see how this one's going to pan out. Uh, will Cat go for... The elusive trade landmark. We will only have to wait and see any minute. Chamber of Commerce, here it comes. Uh, we'll Three, see. Two, one. Three, two, one. School of Cavalry it is. Okay. Oh, no trade. There it is. School of Cavalry. We we tried to we tried to, to convince them, but uh, they decided to uh not listen to us because they're probably way better than us. So School of Cavalry coming out, going to be running across, of course, with some knights and horsemen here once we hit the next age. And uh, Kor better have his spearmen nearby. Yeah, School of Cavalry, that always screams, yay, there's going to be knights coming in sometime soon. It's interesting the way he placed it. Um, it I mean, it's still pretty, pretty optimal with the... 
with the route that the knight will have to take in order to get to the opponent's side. Could have maybe put it a little bit more towards one of the side, maybe get it up with the villagers that he had on gold. Um, that would shorten the distance a little bit, but this is still very fine here. Um, knights are probably going to be arriving at core space at, by like minute 5-10-ish, uh, I would guess here, just because of the uh, the great distance here between these two players. And yeah, that's, that's probably just going to be a delayed point there but core is now having the resource that he needs in order to go for song dynasty as well in just a little bit there he goes now he has the resources so barbican is going to be dropped on those deer as we can see and yeah, he should be able to get that up as well in time um just with the extra distance that the knights have the knight is not going to be able to arrive in time here for that yep there you go. imperial academy just finishing and uh there's that barbican of the sun we got School of Cavalry almost finished. And uh, Wheelbarrow as well. I'm kind of wondering for Empire Wars, should they just start China with two landmarks in the Second Age and just get get that over <laughs> with? Because you know that's what's gonna, <laughs> it's going to have it. Uh, I mean, China already starts with like two um, Imperial officials or maybe even three Imperial officials. They have a lot of Imperial officials when they start in Empire Wars. So I feel like that, that that's already enough. Like that that's a lot of uh, value there. I think it's pretty cool the way that they balance it. I think China already starts with a village as well, so it it's it's pretty amazing because I played Empire Wars and I like tested all the civilizations yeah. out and I looked at what they have or like what bonuses they start with, and then I looked at like how pl uh, games played out and stuff like that, and I was like, okay, this is actually straight up for like a first version. Already seems pretty damn balanced, and I was impressed with that. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be as fun it is to talk through the Dark Age here when we're observing. Uh, <laughs> a little more fun to have some <laughs> action straight away. You know, sometimes you get some Dark Age action. But uh, anyways, uh, looking forward to Empire Wars coming out in what, like four weeks or something like that. I What I wonder is if uh, if like a ladder will come out for that or like a, a way to queue for it if they'll push that out in time or if that's something we could get would be super fun. Yeah, ladder would be pretty cool. And now we see Knight going towards that villager on Boom. the woodland. Gets a first wow. villager kill. Another one? Uh, oh, maybe. My gosh. Oh. oh, he gets another one. He Dual gets an... Oh, that's so much value. Wow. Two, two villagers. villager kills. Wow. Okay, yeah, that that's pretty nuts. That's a two villager lead right now for Cat that he managed to get there. And yeah, that that's that's that rough. That's what you get when you don't have your scout following the enemy knights. That cannot That's definitely good. something that you need to do. Like, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Uh, this is this is the reason why you always have your scout following the enemy knights. And now, oh, oh my no! god, uh, if that if that happened, I I would have screamed. That that's so annoying. To be down to uh, uh, and then just lose two villagers instantly. Like there's nothing more infuriating than losing villagers to the French knights. Yeah, uh, Cor so far he hasn't gathered up any stone, and these knights right now they're positioned at one of his stones. I mean, there's still the other stone that he could go for. But right now, Cat is just spamming out knights. Knights only so far from Cat. And I'm like, okay. Even more knights! Okay. What? Oh, I, I'm, I'm feeling... I'm, wow. I'm feeling... Di no, he's making a stable core. No, there's no archers. It's just knights. Literally just knights. Wow. Hmm. Ah, uh, he doesn't know. I need to take a second to defend Core's honor in chat because someone said Core is a noob. He is in the best of five at the end of this qualifying event. So those you might be seeing some things that look a little one-sided. Do not be fooled. These are some of the best players in the game, and any of them would probably destroy your bronze butt on the ladder. Yeah, I'm just going to say that Core, he, he's got a lot of skills. One of those skills is something like... When he wins, it's a destruction. Uh, wise words from a rain lord. But when he loses, he's got a he's got a like he's got a special skill to make it look easy the way he he's get he gets beaten. But uh, he he's a he is a really good player. So never never underestimate core. Don't forget it's also late for Slami him right now. acting like he's been slighted in the chat. <laughs> it's never protected me Clearly like that. Islam is, Islam is. is trash. Not one of the best players in the game. Caster bias right here. <laughs> oh, we wouldn't be biased, would we? Well, if it's GUA, I'm biased, yeah. Yeah, I mean, GUA is the greatest of all time. That just goes without saying. 
I don't think there's anybody that can beat GUA in a straight up fight when he takes the game seriously. Earlier today, he was just playing around. I heard he was playing on a uh, PlayStation controller. PlayStation, I thought it was a Wii U Joy-Con. Uh, oh, Nintendo I, Switch Joy-Con. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I'm looking it's forward like to when they release the console version of AE4 so I can just like have an account that's just my controller. <laughs> Oh, uh, Knight's teetering around, and there's no scout noticing, and that's gonna be three dead villagers. I can't look! Fitz, bro, I can't look! Oh. Bro. He even got textiles, and he's still gonna lose all three villagers that he had on gold there. He lost six no villagers. second TC, and there's just so many knights, and I, I'm crying myself to sleep. And there's more dead villagers here in just a little bit. Oh, not like this. He should have barbican rushed. <laughs> oh, oh, where are they no. going? <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, uh... Better luck next time. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. To be fair, this qualifier event has gone on for, what, like, seven hours? We're coming up on, like, the seventh hour of our stream being live. So these players have been playing... All day, so don't, just when you think you would do better here at missing a night raid, think again. Yeah, and he's all, well, he's already got chivalry in as well. Damn, the the macro behind there this we is go, huge. There go, Core is getting the oh. counter raid, the comeback. Just needs to kill six villagers to be even. And the spearman got slaughtered. Oh, Cat already is making Spearman. Like, where's the army production right now from Core? It's just uh, lacking a little bit right now, I would say. And, I mean, we we saw how to play this matchup earlier when we had Sword of play against Kiljati. Granted, uh, Sword of had a, a much better, better spawn and a much better uh, map for that. And, yeah, I mean, right now, Cat is just absolutely dominating here. Also walling in one side of the map now. Well, he's got to protect his vills. It's okay. Core is playing China. China is OP, as you said. He should be fine. Yeah, should be fine. I mean, still, this is a, a really dangerous situation to be in right now. I guess Losing we six know why you don't go for one trade. And... <laughs> yeah, this... I'm... Every time I see like a, a French player make like ten knights before they even start making archers or something like that, I'm I'm cringing, especially when it works. I'm personally not a big fan of how strong knights are, especially in feudal age, and especially from the French. But yeah, they're they're a thing. But then, hey guys, I probably can't complain because as soon as I complain, people call me out for playing China. So yeah, that's that. <laughs> Okay, now we see Shugenu being produced here for core, so he's mixing it up a little bit. 22 spears, that's a good amount of spears in order to deal with uh, 12 knights. Now he just needs the Shugenu to deal with the rest. And here we get to the part where we saw him lacking in game number one, where we really need to see him step up when it comes to these fights, is the micro. If he is focusing the knights with his Shugenu, I'm gonna write an angry text at core. Text? You're, te you're texting him? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna write them in it. Nah, it's it's SMS. I'm I'm old school like wow. that. I'm just gonna be like, Hey, core, I paid ten cents for this message. What the fuck were you doing? <laughs> you still paying for your text messages? Oh yeah, I I usually don't write SMS. It's only with core, <laughs> so it wasn't worth it in my in my tarot. <laughs> okay, so cat is being uh, is chasing down the horseman. All things considered, it stinks he lost all those villagers, but look at the villager count. This is... he's close, so... Still... Yeah, I mean, Song Dynasty is still better than the French passive bonus, and... Looking good so far, but Cat is massing a, like, pretty dangerous yeah. army right now. And Core, he needs to keep massing spears behind all of Thousand this. Like, spearmen. he needs to keep making spears. Yeah, just because the knights are so dangerous, you always need, like, double the numbers at least. Okay, here we go. Knights charging in. Archers as well. Can Core hang on? What What do they need to spam for Core to win this war? 
Uh oh. Oh. Ooh. Maybe Spearman. <laughs> he was waiting there. He was waiting there the entire time. Yes, lurking. Loop de loop around the. Huh. Wait, how did he... you've activated my trap? Oh, it, was the, it was the scout. <laughs> <laughs> my trap car. <laughs> is that a Yu-Gi-Oh reference? That is a Yu-Gi-Oh reference. Uh... <laughs> oh boy. Oh, and now the second he pulls all his military to one side, Cat is gonna be attacking with his entire army from the other. Kor, why do you pull your entire military for a single knight and a scout? Please. Oh, he notices. It, it, he notices, but at what timing? The units are just gonna run past that outpost and... Ay, ay, ay. Okay, now he's running back again, but that, that still hurts. Oh, no. Imperial officials? No, not the Imperial officials. Mm -hmm. One goes down. Oh, okay, only one, but still, that hurts. That hurts, Core. Don't let that happen. Your poor units. 20 knights are out right now. Ah, hmm. Hmm. Okay. Core advancing with his units. Kills nice. two knights, at least. That. That's something. But now there are four knights, uh, three knights coming in from Cat, and I see Core being on berries, and I oh, think no. he's not gonna be on berries for much longer. Oh no. I'm imagining like the horror tape if you like clipped all of these villager picks on this. It'd be so scary. Oh, and right now Cat, the army is gonna be out of position from Core. Cat is just now gonna be running. Uh, Cat is just running, gonna run past Kor's army and... Maybe the knights will turn around? Or not? Oh. Kor's army is so out of position. They're so out of position. Those oh, knights no. in the top left are just chilling too. Yeah, they're just waiting. They're literally just waiting for the perfect opportunity. And now now they go. Oh. And the rest of the knights are gonna... <laughs> this is a nightmare. If I was Kor right now, this... I would be pulling my hair right now. I would be screaming at the developers. Why are French knights so OP? That's the me, uh, me right now. Oh my. They're French. He made like only knights for the beginning of the game. Worked out. Yeah, worked out. And I mean, this right now is working out as well. Even more villagers going down. So many villagers going down. And the knights, they, they see the TC with 15 villagers inside. They see the outpost of five inside. They're like, eh. Doesn't bother me. Okay, he's eh, hunting the French worse. villagers. He's gonna even the odds. People asking if Core even has hair left to pull in the chat. It's thinning. We call it thinning, so there's still some left. He's found the military production. Here we go. The comeback. Yeah, the issue is that the knights are coming. He's back. gonna get stabbed in the back by the knights. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a, a sandwich. Okay, Core continues uh, we, to fight. We need a stat and capture age that uh, that we're missing in uh, compared to AOE two, which is like overall villager resources gathered. Hmm. And like overall villager efficiency like stuff resources. like that. Yeah, total resources gathered. Okay, he's nuked two production buildings. He's gonna go for the barracks. Uh, there's about to be a giant oh, he's stuck. fight. Uh -oh. He's stuck. Oh! Heal fish die Flude. Ich steck in die Spulmaschine. Say what? He's stuck. <laughs> he's stuck in the washing machine. <laughs> oh gosh. Here we go. He, you know, all things considered, he escapes that one. For now. Oh no. Spearman out of position. Goodbye, Juganu. You will be missed. Okay. This could be it. Cat. And this is the issue. Like, Kor just A moves with his uh, with his Juganu when he's pulling back. So he's not hitting the archers. He's hitting the... He's gonna hit the, uh, the knights when he attacks. Yeah. Oh, boy. We are uh, currently witnessing the destruction of Core at the end of this tournament. Yeah, this is a, a feels Batman moment, and I think like with this cleanup, 
Core knows. At this point in time, like he might still keep on fighting, but at this point in time, Core knows that he has probably lost but this now. But the reinforcements. Yeah, a couple of reinforcements, but like, look at it this way. 14 spearmen versus 15 knights. That are now gonna heal up with chivalry. Eh. Hey, he's still going. What are these villagers doing? What? Oh, they're just moving around, I guess. Just being reassigned going a little bit, going berries. through all of these, yeah, juicy, juicy berries here for him. Core can get on top of those villagers. Maybe he'll chop through and do a ram push. Never see it coming. If Cat wins this, he's not gonna. He won't have lost even a single game today. Wow. Oh, how many games? Four going that? up. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's seven. Uh, yeah, that, that's going to be ten games in a row. One. Core is aging. He's still doing it. The madman. He's man. aging physically and mentally at the same time here in this game. The nest of bees going to haunt. Here we go. Core is still in this. Let's go. We need some height. 36 military versus 65 with one side having knights. He's chopping. And Core doesn't have the he doesn't have the resources for any of these right now. He's gonna make rams and chop through. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> Clock tower rams. Clock tower rams. Yeah, no one will be able to stop those. Um, dang it. Uh, that ruined yeah. that idea. Well, yeah, once that goes up, I feel like uh, this this feels really bad. Royal Institute. When a Royal Institute goes up and you have like already 20 knights out on the field and you get Royal Biology. That's going to be crazy. I, I feel like the French player probably has like this this little grin on their face at that point in time. Like, hey, <laughs> I can't. I... <laughs> I'm going to win. Okay, here comes the uh, the knights. Not upgrade yet, though. I'm not sure. Oh, I'm getting called that. out. It's not royal biology. It's royal bloodlines. Yeah, how dare you? Yeah, I'm, I'm a bad player. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Seven hours and of casting and you called one tech the wrong thing? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I deserve all the worst in the world for that. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, now we, we see all the techs coming in at the same time, so it's going to be veterancy on the archers, uh, cannon saddles. The saddles upgrade is even better um, because oh, no. it researches so much faster. And Oh, no. He splits up his army. He's just going to be in so many spots at the same time, and Core just doesn't have the mass to split up his army like that to react to all of these things. And his ar main army is also out of position by a lot. I hope Core magically wins this game. I don't know how. Okay. Oh no. Just yeah, speechless. I, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm. I don't know what to say here. This. The spearman this chasing has been the royal GG knights for the last ten-ish minutes. But at every single move, it becomes more GG. Core knows we're watching. He's like, yeah, we're going to make this pod. Upgrades come in. I feel like he needs like double the spearman now. Yeah, oh, he definitely what? does, but he's oh. not going to have double the spearman. He, he, a nest of beasts is in the queue, but he's not fighting with it here right now. Oh, I heard it. Oh no. Man, like, just when you think, like, Cat's like, I'm like, oh, he can be greedy enough. He could just A move this. He's like, nope, I'm going to keep my ring to the very end. He's not going to fight a single uh, spearman with a knight. <laughs> now he is, but at that point, there were only, like, five knights remaining. And yeah, the bees, at this the point in time, as soon as the nest of goes down, it's GG. And there it is. Core called GG. Cat wins. 3-0, wow. not just against Core, but also against Anaten. And I gotta say, what a sweep. mad respect. Like, wow. So just Cat wow. won 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 games today. 10-0. Ten yeah, in a row. 10-0 in a row. Watch out. I'd and be now he's qualified for the main event.
Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, the way he played that, the way he... If he beats Core 3-0, if he beats Anatan 3-0, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited yeah. to see Cat like, really perform in the main event here. Yeah, that's uh, quite a sweep, 10-0 uh, here in this tournament today. But uh, congrats to Cat for advancing. Better luck next time for Core. And, of course, thank you to uh, all of our participants, as always. You know, you might watch the end of a series and, and hear us joke, but respect for all these players. They're all very good or they would not be here playing today, yeah. of course.